In this video, you will learn three things to unlock your team dynamics. Hi, I'm Dr. Lola Gershfeld, and I help companies master the art of relationships so they can overcome conflict issues and create the extraordinary teams they deserve. Von Burton-Lamphy wrote the first book on system theory. And what he said that if you want to change a living system, like a human being or relationship, you have to know what the core organizing elements are in that system. And you have to change those. The first thing is to know what are the core organizing elements that are driving the dynamics of your team and that you can change. And you can change a lot of things in the living system. You can change the symptoms on the outside. I see managers still focusing on teaching people communication skills. Where the research shows that you can teach people communication skills, they can learn them, they can do it in the training, and it will make no difference on how they communicate with each other or especially when they're in conflict. Of course it doesn't. And if you don't believe me, I invite you to consider whether you use your communication skills when you are in a fight with your partner. Do you? I don't, because I don't care about my skills. I care about all the things that we all care about when we are in a survival mode. When I'm in those kinds of fights, I have this EMC trainer in my head, and the EMC trainer says, don't say that. But I say it anyway, because who cares? I want to be heard, I want to be right, and I want to say whatever I want to say, and my partner is not going to stop me, right? We all get stuck. The same applies to team relationships. Team relationships and interactions are attachment-based. And so what John Balby, who was the father of attachment theory, said that the core organizing elements that are driving the drama and that you need to change is how people deal with their emotions, how they send their emotional signals to each other, and how these signals create positive connections or perpetual negative disconnections. The second thing is I think that team relationships have a reputation for being difficult because we have not had a map. In general, relationships have been viewed as insignificant. As long as people completed their task and performed, having good working relationships were ni was nice to have, but not that important. So you sort of you help people get along and get them out of conflict. And if you couldn't manage that, it was chaos. Well, that is not how we see what is happening in a team that is experiencing conflict. In fact, team connection and relationships are very important to people for them to thrive and to do their work well. So the reason why you are in the soup, so to speak, against it all, because when team members are emotionally disconnected, they are acting out the most core existential drama in human beings. They are acting what they do when vulnerability hits them. And you can look at the vulnerability in lots of different ways. We look at it existentially. I saw an interview with Irvin Yalom the other day, and he talked about existential vulnerabilities. And basically what attachment theory says is that the biggest existential challenge for all of us is aloneness. We are terrified of emotional isolation, and we should be, because it's wired into us. It's not a weakness to have. We are terrified of emotional isolation because emotional connection is not just the icing on the cake, something on the sidelines, something that is good to have it if you don't, if, if you have it, but if you don't, that's too bad. No, emotional connection is our greatest source of safety in life. It is an ancient wired-in survival code, and it has a structure to it. And one of the things that makes it hard when team members are in conflict is that they are playing out their existential fears and needs. They get caught in their basic way of dealing with their vulnerability. So all their fears and needs as human beings come up. All their sense of self comes up. All their sense of who they are comes up. And... What does it mean to mean something to somebody comes up? And do I mean something to somebody on this team? Do I mean something to my manager, to this company? All these huge feelings come up. And if you don't have a map, 
That's like being hit by a tsunami because that is what is in the room. And it's difficult to address this by teaching people communication skills or giving them insight into how they should behave. The third thing is to understand that when you do have a map, ah, that means that when you go into this existential drama, you have the most incredible arena, a life arena for change. You start to see how people change each other, how they start to offer secure connection and support to each other, how they start to become more accessible, responsive, and engaged with each other, to be present in all of their vulnerabilities, and that changes people. Through the emotional connection process, you start to have the tools and the roadmap to help team members to understand their sense of self, the way they deal with emotions, with their vulnerabilities, and how to send clear emotional signals to each other so they can create positive connections. It starts to change the relationship, it starts to change the trust in the relationship, and it starts to change the dynamics of the team. The most important thing is they start to grow each other. Emotional connection really grows people, and that makes a huge difference for you as a manager, for the team, and for the organization. In the comments below, let me know what was your favorite part of this video. Please hit like and subscribe to our channel because it really helps us and it means a lot to me. I'm Dr. Lola Gershfeld and I'll see you next time.